Hello, hello, and welcome to the Tip of the Iceberg podcast, brought to you, as always, by InsideThePenguins.com. I'm your host, Nick Berlansky, joined, as always, by Nick Horwat here on this 4th of July holiday. We hope everybody that is off is enjoying their off day. We also want to extend a happy belated Canada Day to all of our Canadian friends from the true white north who celebrated that on Friday, of course. But today is the 4th of July Independence Day for the United States. Mm -hmm. And I want to start this off with the most controversial question you'll hear all day, Horwat. <laughs> Are fireworks overrated? I say yes. Uh, see, I can't say yes because I'm from the city of Zambelli Fireworks where we do it best. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to say no just because uh, thanks to the Z and A to Z of, of the A to Z's of Pittsburgh, Zambelli, uh, it, they're incredible in this town. Mm -hmm. People people don't go to pirate games. They're starting to a little more now with O'Neill Cruz up. But back in the day, back in the Dizze, people did not go to pirate games. They went to the opener, certain bobblehead nights, but guaranteed they would always go to the firework nights. Mm -hmm. And they still do and they still do that. Someone posted a picture this past weekend of the amount of people that sat through the 19 to 2 shellacking they took <laughs> just to watch fireworks after the game. Yeah. So in this town, in the great city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, fireworks not overrated because we do it right. We do a okay. big the company. At least it was here. I think they moved out since then, but it started here, mm -hmm. and we do it correctly. We do it big. We do it bright. We do it right. And on the Fourth of July, they're bigger and better than ever. I mean, KDK Radio syncs up some audio, to, so you have music mm -hmm. to go with it cheap plug but hey they're not paying me to do that i should i should be getting paid though but yeah uh, in this town they do it correctly i think that's why at least here they're not overrated i've seen fireworks in other towns yeah they suck i'll admit to that they suck in other towns i think it's just to the point for me where it's like if you've seen one firework you've seen most of them if you've seen yeah. one fireworks show, let's put it that way. If you've seen one fireworks show, you've probably seen all the fireworks you're going to see. The only thing that I've seen different in recent memory was New Year's Day, the place we went, or New Year's Eve, I should say. He had fireballs, and this was a, a personal uh, fireworks show. So that was interesting. I've seen fireballs before, but never never just in someone's backyard. That was interesting. Yes, it's always also back backyard fireworks are always fun. Especially Whenever I say backyard fireworks, I do mean the big ones. Yeah, like the ones that are not legal in Pennsylvania. You, you don't mean sparklers? No. Um, <laughs> but I have a distant relative who does, who lives in Latrobe, who has a mm -hmm. big old farmland. Uh, and yeah. He shoots off like you know, with the big control board. Oh okay. yeah, fireworks every year. Oh yeah. Um, I think it was last summer or the mm -hmm. summer before. Uh, me and Megan went up to Erie where her family uh, brought up just. Just a bunch of fireworks. Not nothing control board like it was just beers in hand. Get the lighters out right next to it and run. Yeah, uh, and that was a good time. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, fireworks yeah. are totally fun when done safely and correctly, and when there is a lot of them. Only in the United States are drunken people handling explosives celebrated every single year like clockwork. But every let's year. get into let's get into the Pittsburgh Penguins news. There hasn't been a whole lot of it. It seems like a lot of the NHL is kind of taking the break for the holiday weekend with Canada Day being on Friday, 4th of July being today. But we do have a couple things to discuss. First and foremost, it seems like Pittsburgh Penguins will be retaining assistant coach Mike Vellucci as he has missed out on another head coaching opening. He was interviewed by the Boston Bruins. Apparently, he was interviewed twice by the Boston Bruins. He was also interviewed by the Flyers on a very extensive, long interview. Wasn't able to get either of those positions. And now the lone job left is the San Jose Sharks, which actually coincidentally opened up late last week. We didn't know that was going to be an open position. But that is the last positioning. But all signs point to Mike Bellucci being back with the Pittsburgh Penguins. To me, I think that's, that's a win for the Pens. That's a victory for the Penguins for sure. It's hard for Mike Vellucci. I'm sure he wants to be a head coach somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's hard to get into. It. I mean, the joke goes around every year. The coaching carousel, because it's the same 34, 35, maybe 36 guys, uh, to get into that elite group. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, he hasn't reached it yet. He's still just an assistant. You do kind of have to have your your break somewhere as a head coach. I think a lot of these guys are getting their start as minor league coaches. I mean, look at Dan Bilesman. He just went back to – uh, Seattle's he's going to head coach their first official uh, AHL franchise the Coachella Valley Firebirds by the way is an awesome name 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so he might get the call back up one day if Seattle decides they're not doing the right thing at head coach. They're not doing a lot of things right. Um, so for Volucci, if, he, if, he, if his path is to ultimately make it back into or make it to an NHL coaching head coaching job, um, he may want to look at a minor league spot. You never know what comes from those. Mm-hmm. I mean, Mike Sullivan did it here. Uh, it's what well, he he was the minor league head coach. I keep forgetting that he was the mm-hmm. Wilkes-Barre head coach for a couple years or something, and um, it got him to where he is today. So maybe we see something come of that. But for now, win for the Penguins, and it's hard to join that elite group of coaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've liked what Mike Bellucci has been able to do the Pittsburgh Penguins penalty kill unit. Obviously, he had a rough first season last or two years ago. Last season, he got it back on the right track, finished third in the NHL on the penalty kill. Did the Penguins, and a lot of that is props to Mike Bellucci. I've seen people out there saying the Penguins need to re-sign Zach Aston Reese this summer because their power penalty kill was not the same without him. I think we're good on on that. To, to me, I think we're good on that experiment. Yeah, we're fine. It's At some point, you need to score goals. I think, and that was my big argument with, with Zach Aston Reese the entire time. Like, yes, he's a great penalty killer. Yes, he plays great defense. Score a goal. Yeah. The, the name of the game is to score more goals, not stop more pucks well and i can see in his position where yeah your primary job is to not give up goals and not have the other team score goals but eventually you have to put the puck in the back of the net that's why brian boyle was such a key factor for the penguins last year is because he could play in that fourth line role and he could score goals let us not forget the between the legs goal in front i don't remember who that we were playing but uh he was, was able a late to game. It was a late it. blowout game, I think. Yeah, he was able to. It might have been that Red Wings 11 to 2 shellacking, but he, he was able to play that fourth line role and score goals, which is something that Aston Reese, albeit very good as a defensive forward, is not somebody that can put in eight to 10 goals, yeah. which is kind of what you're looking for is the basis of, of a fourth liner. That's like peak performance from a fourth liner. And there, he was never anywhere close to it. Yeah, and nothing against Aston Reese. I'm sure he's going to go on to have a pretty decent career as the defensive forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of half the reason why we keep Luger around, right? We know yes. he's good at that, but he, yeah. we know he could pot a good amount of offensive points as well. Man, imagine if he has some actual goal scoring line mates instead of Zach Aston Reese and Dominic Simone. Um, that's all I'm going to say. I think there's a couple <laughs> stories on inside the Penguins about that one, but no, good for, good for the Penguins to get Volucci back. Obviously, like you said, it sucks for Volucci, but his day will probably come has experience as a head coach in the minors and the juniors. So you would have to think, especially if he's getting long interviews, second interviews this summer, that he's close to knocking on the door to getting a job. Yeah, he has to be at some point. It, it's Someone's going to leave the carousel eventually, and there will be a spot open. I mean, we know Trotz is taking the year off, mm-hmm. but uh, that doesn't mean his spot is open. But that means there is uh, there are chances of people opening up opportunities for Mike Lucci. Yes, so let's talk about the other one. And honestly, this is, again, we say it every single episode. This is going to be what we talk (laughs) about until it happens. But it seems like the Penguins and Chris Letang are closing in on a new contract extension that would leave Letang with the Pittsburgh Penguins for the next couple of years. It is reportedly being said that they are between seven and eight million dollars right now in their average annual value. When I hear that, considering Chris Letang on his previous contract made seven point two five million, if they are between seven and eight right now, then they are doing the exact same thing they did with Brian Rust, which for the Pittsburgh Penguins, again, massive win. Big W, big W with this. S- seven point two, seven point two five is what he was at, and sure he's getting old. And I, again, it's coming to the point where more and more I am be I am becoming okay with the five year thing. Mm-hmm. So that's not the discussion here. We're just discussing that that number, which uh, not going much for, much higher than what he was already making is huge because mm-hmm. we know he's been rumored to be getting eight to nine from us, no less. Mm-hmm. We, the open market has not started yet, so there are no rumors of other teams offering him nine. There have been talks that the discussions have reached Latang to uh, have linked Latang to nine million dollars. That's a lot. Now it's not. That's just a lot of money in general. It's not too much more than what he was already making, but it's mm-hmm. higher than what we would like him to go to. Uh, Brian Burke said that both Latang and Malkin need to bend a little if they want to remain here. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It seems like Latang is willing to do it a little if he's going to go to seven to eight million. Imagine if we got him at seven, seven flat. Oh, 
If he, well, wow. see, but that would well, be no really. Way, but... There's no way, like, because because you know he wants more money because he has been underpaid. We've agreed to that yeah. fact. So you would imagine he does get a pay increase, but if it's only 750k, that's a, you can't ask for more as a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins or somebody that follows that team, especially considering the fact that for how long has Crosby not been the highest paid player on the team? If Crosby at 8.7 is your highest paid player, you're yeah. in a pretty good spot. Now there is the issue of having so many $4 million, $5 million players because yeah. they have about half a dozen of them, but that can be handled. It's a lot easier to handle that than three or four or five guys up over that $7 million mark, which is where the Toronto Maple Leafs are at right now. That that's, that's when you start to get a little bit more issues whenever you have that many people at that big of a contract. But for Chris Letang to be between seven and eight, I think that is a massive W if the Penguins can get that done. I told you and was starting to say off air that I was surprised we didn't get an extension announcement over the weekend. But again, might be the holiday weekend, Canada Day, of course. Letang is a Quebecois. Mm -hmm. So maybe he was celebrating that. And they said, you know what, we'll come back, make that deal next week. If I asked you, Horwat, Latang will be signed by, and then a day. Do you have any idea when you would think, like, we're not going to hold you to it. At least I'm not going to hold you to it. I don't know about our listeners, but I'm not going to hold you to it. But when do you think this deal could be done by? <laughs> done by July 12th, 2022, the day before free agency. I'm going to take the cheap way out. Mm -hmm. Unlike Chris Latang here, which is the absolute correct way. Yes. Get your money. And take your small raise here. I like I said, I'm fine with the five years, especially if if we have to bring in clauses into the discussion. Uh, he has, a, let's say, the full no move for the first three. Line him up mm -hmm. with the Crosby deal. Ship him out after that if you need to. I'm still convinced that Crosby's got more hockey to play after his contract, but that's a different story for three years down the line. Um, yeah, but line try and line as many people up with that three year deal as possible. Mm -hmm. And. If we give Latang five, fine. He is just all the discussion we've had over the last few weeks. I've really come around to he's not the same thirty-five year old. Mm -hmm. he, is he going to be a phenomenal player at forty? Probably not. He's not going to be. I, he's not going to be the uh, the Gordy Howe of this generation. He's not going to be able to uh, still play the game at an elite level at the age of even thirty-eight plus. Mm -hmm. So I say we give him the five because that's what he wants. Make sh give give us wiggle room. Maybe um, I don't know if you can still do the deals that are like an actual payment salary dollars lower by then. Um, you can probably front load signing bonuses and stuff yeah, like that. Front load it if you need to for money reasons. Um, maybe even like I said, the, the clauses are in there. The salary cap is supposed to jump that year, I think, too. That Crosby mm -hmm. year, like a big number mm -hmm. so even if you have to backload it backload it because maybe you're able to pay him with the big salary cap jump that might come in mm -hmm. um everything's pointing north for me and signing Latang to almost whatever he wants mm -hmm. i'm not saying push it to nine million but if you have to go eight sure if you have to go seven whatever sure five years whatever i'm cool with this now i'm very okay with it especially because it is the harder position to replace um, I still want to retool the defense even with him around, mm. but oh yeah, those are just again discussions that priority number one needs to be taken care of first. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and here's the thing with Latang, you you said it perfectly there. If it's between seven and eight right now, and he says, you know what, I'd actually really like eight point two five. Give him eight. What is that two hundred fifty thousand? I know every penny counts in a salary cap league, but give him that eight point two five. And the same thing with the three to five years. When you sit back and think of it, if you're okay with the three. What is the last two? Because he, he's not going to be the guy he is at the age of 40 that he is right now. We understand that. But is he not going to be a serviceable third-pairing defenseman in the National Hockey League? I have a hard time believing that he wouldn't. Now, it's a hard pill to swallow having an $8.25 million third-pairing defenseman look at the New Jersey Devils last year paying $9 million for P.K. Subban services. But still, for what you're going to get in the next three years, and if you're really serious about winning that Stanley Cup, you can eat the last two years, even if Latang. it's not like you're going to be using that for somebody who's going to be awful. He'll be a serviceable player. He'll be a lineup player, and you're going to get it the most of it in the front half. And if you can front load a lot of the signing bonuses, then there you go. And I wouldn't even say give him no clause in the back. Give him a modified. I'm sure, sure somebody, 
if there's a 10 team list, I guarantee you, if Chris Letang is, is booty cheeks by the age of 40, but still making $8.25 million, I'll give you any money you can. The Montreal market will still take him. Send him home. Yep. Send him home. That's, if, that's... If, if that's the worst case scenario, they'll take him. Somebody will take Chris Letang at the age of 40. Yeah, somebody will, especially if he's still serviceable and not mm. injured to hell and back. I yeah. think it's total, absolutely totally possible. And you know, the other thing, too, is John Marino also has five years left on his deal. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Line those two contracts up. Don't even bring the Crosby discussion into this. Suddenly you have your top two right-hand defensemen up for the same amount of time. And if Latang is okay with this, if he needs to play second line behind Marino in a couple years, there you go. That was the plan all along. After yeah. Marino's rookie season. Now, of course, he's dipped, and we'll talk about John Marino in our next segment, which we we didn't even we didn't even throw out there the fact that we are doing a Fourth of July <laughs> ranking, ranking the best Penguins American-born players that are currently on the roster. We'll do that after the break. Last thing I want to leave you with before we hit that manscaped break is when I answer the Latang will be signed by. I told you I expected it to be this weekend. Yeah, we were both <laughs> probably enjoying the festivities of the weekend. And one of us would have had to, with not a straight frame of mind, write that article. But nonetheless, I expected this weekend, so I wouldn't be surprised if it happened later today. You know, happy 4th of July, Penguins fans. But realistically, I'm going to say the NHL draft is this Thursday on the 7th of July. It's going to happen before the draft. That's that's what I'll, like, I'll, I'll say. I know that's not really going out on a limb, considering where all these conversations are at. I mean, Friedman saying that opposing GMs are saying, yeah, no, there's a path there. Yeah, yeah. And then people knowing that it's within a million dollars, which we all know is within 0.75, because he's not going to take a pay decrease this year. Right. It, it's it's understandable that it's probably coming really, really soon. Once your conversation gets below the Jack Johnson buyout for this year, <laughs> yeah. I think uh I think we're at a pretty, pretty good, pretty good path right now. All righty. Well. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, ranking all of the U.S.-born Pittsburgh Penguins. We'll be right back. There's a certain confidence that comes with being properly groomed. There's an aura, a vibe. You can just tell by the way they carry themselves. We call this BGE, Big Groomed Energy. And there's only one way to get that BGE, Manscaped. We'd like to introduce you to their best and biggest ultimate hygiene bundle yet. The Platinum Package 4.0. Manscaped is the leader in below the waist grooming. Now trust them with the rest. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code ALLSTEALERS. Manscaped's brand new Platinum Package 4.0 is the biggest bundle they've ever offered giving you a bulk discount on Manscaped's top products. Inside this Platinum Package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner, Anti-Chafing Boxers, and the Shed Travel Bag to hold all your goods while traveling. In addition to shaving, you can now completely upgrade your shower routine with the Ultra Premium Body Wash and Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner. You'll have your skin and hair feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code ALLSTEALERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code ALLSTEALERS. Unlock your big groomed energy with Manscaped. And remember... When you trim your hedges, your tree stands taller. Welcome back to the Tip of the Iceberg podcast. Happy Independence Day to all of those stateside that celebrate. We're going to do a special 4th of July rankings as we rank the Pittsburgh Penguins that were born in the the U.S. of A. Now, Horop, before we get into ranking them, and I'll bring up the names here in a minute mm-hmm. on the on the screen, before we rank any of them, do you know which state has produced the most current Pittsburgh Penguins? Okay, let's see here. Definitely not Nebraska. Nebraska Chickens. is tied for second. Oh, so, all right, which state has multiple? <laughs> Dublin's from Maine. Yep. Um, 
Russ is from Michigan. Yep. Marino is from the Boston area. Yep. Where's Ruedel from? <laughs> I feel like he's, I, I want to say New York or California. He's from California, isn't he? Yes, he is. He is from San Diego, California. I forget who I'm missing just, now. Just, just give a guess. At that point, <laughs> I'm just going to say Michigan. Michigan has one. They're also tied for second. That is Brian yeah. Rust. California, actually the state that has birthed the most Pittsburgh Penguins on the current roster because Chad Ruedel from sunny San Diego, California. Isn't and Jason Zucker from California? Jason Zucker wow. is from Newport Beach, California. So if, if that's a little, nice little tidbit there. If you didn't know that, the state with the most Pittsburgh Penguins that were born there, currently on the roster, California. <laughs> Gotta love to see it. It's a hockey market, man. <laughs> Good hockey market. But let's get into this here. As we rank the U.S.-born current Pittsburgh Penguins, I'll bring up the list on the screen. Horwat, let's start with number seven. There's seven of them, and we'll go from seven to one. Who is your number seven Pittsburgh Penguin on this list? Man, that's... Now that I'm looking at it, it's kind of hard. I have to say Chad Reweedle just on principle, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Because everyone else above him is just a very good player. Yeah. Except, oh, maybe there's, a, there's, all right, never mind. It's not very good, but there are a couple of, uh, there's definitely a good amount of very good players mm-hmm. uh, on this list. Yeah, whenever I go number seven, my, my, not to say they're the worst U.S. borns, but comparatively to the other six, they're the one that's lowest on my list. So my number seven rank is Drew O'Connor, who is from Wayne, New Jersey. He's the young buck of this group, mm-hmm. clearly. We'll really see what he is next season. I'm excited to see it unfold. I think he has a bright future as a fourth liner, potentially third liner. We haven't seen. He does have that scoring touch. But he certainly has an opening here to potentially make the Penguins' fourth line and stay there if he can stay healthy throughout the season. I have him at number seven, but I'm also very excited about Drew O'Connor next season. And that's the exact reason why I would make Drew O'Connor the number six on this list. Uh, He Mm -hmm. has the potential to be something. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't put him at the bottom just because his future looks brighter than uh, some of the other futures on this list that I will get into in the very Mm -hmm. coming numbers here. Mm Mm-hmm. So for me, actually, we have a flip-flop between six and seven. You have yeah. Rue Weedle is seven, O'Connor is six. I have O'Connor is seven, and Rue Weedle is my number six. Obviously, we mentioned he's from San Diego, California. Last season, to me, he showed his real worth to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Obviously, he was that fill-in guy doing a great job at it, could not play a game in four months and then look at the peak of his powers. But last year, he actually had a chance to show – that he's more than just a replacement level NHL player. He's not a top four guy, but he's no longer that replacement level. So I was really happy with his performance last season. I'm excited to see what he does this next season. Number five, Horwat. I'll lead us off here. I'm going with another defenseman. Mm -hmm. Brian Dumoulin Mm -hmm. would have been much higher on this list two years ago, but I have him at number five right now from Biddeford, Maine. I would really like to see what he could do as a third pairing guy. Similar to what happened with Cody Ceci, he started to not be able to play that top pairing role. That was in Toronto. Then he came to Pittsburgh, was placed in the third pairing with Mike Matheson. He flourished, got himself a nice contract. Brian Dumoulin's going into a contract year, and we can all agree that his days as that number one pairing defenseman are starting to become numbered. Maybe at the beginning of the season, he'll be fine, but those legs might come out from under him as the year goes along. I would say if we see a guy like Brian Dumoulin on the left, Chad Ruedel on the right for your third pairing, as long as you fill up the top four above them, that's a pretty successful pairing. And I wouldn't mind seeing it next year. Yeah, actually, I kind of like that too. It's it's a lot of money to put on your fourth line, but we already it is. Have, or third line, but we already have a lot of money there. And I totally agree, by the way, with the positioning of fifth on this mm-hmm. list for Brian Dumoulin. Um, just because really that, that past season was not profitable for him. And uh, that was an issue. So, yeah, he drops to fifth on this list, shockingly, behind, uh, if I can continue on, my number yeah. four here, Jason Zucker, who, again, could have been higher, but just couldn't pull it together injury-wise. And that's just unfortunate. But, um, I mean, he's the leading, co- leading talk for a buyout on this team. I don't think we will, just because having more than one buyout on this, on this frame does not sound fun. No. Uh, but still. I think uh, he has a lot to prove still, but unfortunate injuries can line up for that sort of situation. Mm -hmm. 
And, and honestly, when you talk about buyouts, nobody has it worse than the Minnesota Wild right now with that Suter and Parise buyout yeah. going to cost them over $10 million for the next three years mm -hmm. combined. But when I think of Jason Zucker, I do think of the fourth best player on this list as well from Newport Beach, California, as we mentioned. He's a multi-time 20-goal scorer, so he's been that guy before when he was in Minnesota. He showed little glimpses of it when he first came over to Pittsburgh, but he just hasn't been able to stay healthy. If he's able to do that, and I've said it multiple times on this show this summer, if he can stay healthy, I could see him getting back to where he was with the 20-goal scorer pace. Now, without that, he does still play an aggressive style. It's a fun style of hockey to watch. He's a pain in the ass for people on the other side of the of the other side of the ice. And I just need to see him healthy because if he's healthy, again, somebody who could be higher on this list. But as of right now, we both have him at number four. Mm -hmm. Just the way it is, the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Number three, I'm going to the mass hole. John Marino is the third best American born player on the Pittsburgh Penguins right now. Again, a player that has the potential to be higher. If you saw mm -hmm. what he did in his rookie season, you know that there's a lot of skills there. The league has adjusted to Marino. Now it's time for Marino to finally adjust back. I think we started to see the beginnings of it in his third season last year, but we need to see it come all the way back. Does he still have that offensive game that he showed in his rookie year? Can he still be that top pairing guy? We don't know. Or is he going to just shade himself and make himself more a defensive defenseman? Whichever lane he chooses, he needs to choose a lane because we need to know how to deploy him. And I'm sure the Pittsburgh Penguins know how to deploy him. But for me sitting here, I don't know. Is he an offensive defenseman? He's clearly not a top tier guy, but he hasn't shown that offensive skill set as much as he did in that rookie year, which is why it drops him a little bit. But I do think he is still a solid top four option for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I have him at number three among U.S. born Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah. Absolutely. He has the great potential to be something. Like I just said in the last segment, a um, couple years down the line, if Latang's not, you know, booking on all cylinders, there's your top top line right right hand defenseman because uh, I'm a, I'm safely really assuming and hoping that his uh, potential, like he does reach his potential and he does mm -hmm. grow into that role. Um, whenever people discuss the trade fodder in uh, the defensive core this year, John Marino's name keeps getting brought up and I'm really hard on keeping him around. I think mm -hmm. um, just because I think he has the potential to be something. So yeah, number three on this list as well. So as of right now, we have the identical three, four and five. I'm assuming number two and one are going to follow suit, but we'll do this anyway from Pontiac, Michigan. My number two Pittsburgh penguin born in the United States is Brian Rust. He's a top line NHL player. He's a great goal scorer. He's still knocking on 30's door, hasn't been able to get to that plateau. If he stays healthy for a full season, you would imagine that he's probably going to end up being, at some point, a 30 goal scorer in the National Hockey League as he is in the prime of his career. Also, I wrote a story about it last week. The Penguins shouldn't, but it's still nice that you could use him in every facet of the game. At the end of the season, he was a top penalty killing forward for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He was a top power play unit guy for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and he was playing on their top forward line in general now i wrote an article that they need to scale it back on friday so check that out at inside the penguins and other than that though you can't be upset about what brian rust has been for the pittsburgh penguins his entire career no you can't be uh, he's got um, he's another guy that has great potential uh to continue to grow he's gonna get that 30 goals he's mm -hmm. he's just it, unfortunate circumstances yeah. uh, now that he's got a contract though he's gonna probably keep playing on the first line of Crosby mm -hmm. um, 30 goals is definitely within reach but what's fun is that the guy ahead of him has already gotten 40 a couple of times and I and we have talks that he could hit 50 one day Jake Gensel ladies and gentlemen yeah yeah Jake Gensel from Omaha Nebraska of course now by way of Minnesota as well Elite goal scorer. That's where we're at yeah. right this, but like the, he has the elite tag as a goal scorer in the National Hockey League just because that is what he is at this point. Two-time 40 goal scorer in the league. I think he's he's potentially a 100-point player. I thought it was going to happen last season. Of course, missing the first couple of games of the year, that doesn't help. Also, the fact that you were missing Sidney Crosby. When, when you're playing with Evan Rodriguez as your number one center, you're probably not going to end up as an 100-point player if that happens for an extended period of time. I think at some point he does get that to that plateau. I don't know if it's next season, 
But honestly, I thought it was last year, so I'll just keep saying it. Next year, Jake Gensel will have 100 points in the National Hockey League. Ooh, a 100-point season. Okay. Does that go 50-50? I don't think it's 50-50. I'll ah. say 40-64 for finishing for 104 points. <laughs> and that would definitely line up with a 30-goal season for Brian Rust. So, yes, that's we love to see it. I'm, I'm, I like that idea a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And quick honorable mentions to – uh, Casey DeSmith, who currently just doesn't have a contract, American yeah. born, and Brian Boyle, who we're, I think, assuming is retiring, but also does not have a contract. So mm-hmm. there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the U.S. born rankings. Officially, we they're basically the same. It was kind of boring, sorry, but yeah. we ranked them. You let us know if you want to what your rankings are. I feel like they might be similar, but the only difference being six and seven. I have O'Connor Ruweedle. As seven and number six, you have Ruidal O'Connor flipping flopping, and that's Doomlin, Zucker, Marino, Rust, Gensel. Complete agreement here at the tip of the iceberg podcast on that one. But let's finish off this episode at the 31 minute mark. We still have one last thing to get to, and that's our weekly pens poll. We asked, and this is one that literally, when there's nothing else to talk about, let's have a little bit of fun. Which dream scenario would you most want to see the Penguins pull off? And this really separated the flurry stands from Mm. the rest of the Penguins followers. Because if you look at the top two options on this, I love Marc-Andre Fleury as much as the next Penguins fan. But him returning goes nowhere near having Nathan McKinnon traded to the Pittsburgh Penguins, which won this poll at 57%. And drafting and or trading for Connor Bedard, who will be the number one overall pick in next year's draft, and listen, if you haven't seen this kid play, which you might not have, watch this kid play. Look up the YouTube highlights. He is a force to be reckoned with. And he we thought Shane Wright was going to be the next big thing. He might be. He might not be. But Connor Bedard right now is stealing headlines as the next big thing for the NHL. The, 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 this one was pretty much, let, it, let me trade all of our bad players for all of your good players. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> gotta love dream scenarios yeah absolutely i think mark andre Fleury. yeah okay it's a storybook ending but come on man nathan mckinnon who's still on one of the league's best contracts for another season yeah into the no doubt number one or for next year uh by the way what position does he play again is he forward connor bedard is a forward okay because every time we see these highly touted players coming up to the draft they're always like oh he scores this much he does all that and then you're like he's a defenseman Oh, in power. Yeah. <laughs> Rasmus Dahlin. Oh, like, yeah. How? But anyway, it, good to see that he's actually a forward and can no, make more he, sense. To, if he was a defenseman, he'd just be going to the Sabres and we'd already have to be able to say that. Yeah. <laughs> but still, I think, of course, that's the dream scenario. One mm-hmm. of the top players in the league right now with one of the top prospects the league has seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is that is obviously the dream scenario. Again, Take all of my bad players and I'll take all of your good players. Yeah. So the final voting on this, McKinnon won the entire poll, traded to Pittsburgh. It was 57%. Draft slash trade for Connor Bedard, 30% of the vote, and a return of Marc Andre Fleury Lafleur, 13%. I would go with the, the Connor Bedard thing just because, yes, I would love to see McKinnon and Crosby on the same team. That's why I even thought of putting that into this poll. But I can get my fix on that at the World Cup of Hockey in a couple of years. Like they'll, yeah, I, they'll be on the same team then, and that that'll be enough for me. But Connor Bedard is 18 years old. I know it's magic beans because every draft pick is. That's as sure thing as you're gonna get since like McDavid. I feel like I that's, like that's how people are talking about it. Yeah. Get the 18 year old stud, and then you can start over and just pass the torch. Mm-hmm. Lemieux to Crosby, Crosby to Bedard, Bedard to my nephew Brody Mock in in 18 years. That's just keep passing that torch. I, I like the idea of um, Crosby and uh, McKinnon sharing a team, but by God, I bet that's hell to play with. Those... Yeah, you you better be in line because if not, <laughs> listen, no no carbs, nope, no drinking, no doing anything in the public. It suddenly turns the Penguins' practice into boot camp, and it's that's Spon- that sounds intense. Sponsored by Tim Hortons. Yeah. <laughs> yes but that sounds a little intense so mm-hmm. i'm from a fan's perspective watching those games is a ton of fun from a player and probably playing games with them is a ton of fun listen people can um, say that but like come on but you, is it really that bad 
I don't know. Whenever, whenever now the stories keep coming out that Crosby is saying that, yeah, McKinnon's just as intense as I am, and mm-hmm. he has been for a long time. It's a little frightening. <laughs> whenever a 17 year old Nathan McKinnon is, McKinnon is telling already Stanley Cup champion Sidney Crosby to get your head up, <laughs> I think, or wake up, whatever he said. Uh, yeah, that guy's intense. Mm-hmm. And we know Crosby's just as intense. So that's a fun team to watch. Probably hell to play with. Probably a ton of fun to play with at the same time, but the best sort of hell. Listen, Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia, forges animals. Apparently. Absolute machines. And nothing less. Just machine after machine for Stanley Cups amongst the two of them. Crosby, of course, doing the majority of the legwork on that one. But no, I, I still stick with Bedard. And I'd like to see Flurry back. And I know the door is still open for that. This this off season for the Pittsburgh Penguins, Ooh. and I know you don't want to see it. No, but, not one bit. But listen, if he comes in on a one million dollar deal, would you not be excited to have at least that talented of a player for one million dollars? If he's fully willing to accept being back up here again, what do you That's need? A, do you do you need a written statement from the, from this man? I pretty much because we know how Alan Walsh can be. <laughs> we know how Alan Walsh can be. I don't <laughs> need to see a sword with a penguin uniform, and again everyone is aware every pundit has said that flurry still has the ability to be a starting goalie yeah. that being said he is within reach of second all time if you were mark andre flurry and you are hearing that you still have and believe in yourself that you still have the ability to be a starting goalie in the league why not be the starting goalie for a season two seasons and, and hit one of the biggest marks in this league w- would you not be okay with 1a 1b that gets flurry the opportunity to do that you see, that's where it's difficult for me, but still, I just think ah, we I know we know how Alan Walsh can be. We Tristan Jari is on a great path of being a starter. Sure, he yes. needs some resting time. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But how much resting time does he need? It's finding that happy medium that's hard to do, but that's what the coaches are for. Mm-hmm. And Flurry's gonna demand a ton of money because he can. If we are able to get Flurry for a million dollars and he's <laughs> able and he, <laughs> dream scenario again, well, if we are well, yeah. able to get flurry for one million dollars he says i'm okay with being the backup to fringe starter how's that Mm -hmm. then okay fine do it but also uh apparently ron hextall wants to resign casey to smith so you know yeah yeah that that also came out over the weekend i I forgot to put that in here mainly because i was trying to trying to forget it but no i don't hate casey to smith but i i I do agree with you that it's time to yeah, it's time to switch things up. And not only that, he, he may not have the contract, but Casey DeSmith did sign on to the charity softball classic. So that's about as uh, as about as sure as it can get. Insider information, even though that was out on Twitter like three days ago. But we're no, good. yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. All right. <laughs> but nonetheless, when we talk about dream scenarios to me, you know, at the end of the day, drafting Connor Bedard, who's what, 18 years old and has all the potential in the mm-hmm. world. That's the dream scenario to me. Like the, you, you don't go anywhere else other than that. But yeah, nonetheless, everybody enjoy the rest of your 4th of July. We hope you're having a nice day off. If you're off, if you're at work, listen, just get to that end bell, go home, grill up some hot dogs, grill up some hamburgers, drink a couple beers, and we'll see you guys on Thursday. That has been the tip of the iceberg podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see you guys later this week on draft day, Mm. Thursday, July 7th. And the Penguins actually have a first round pick. We'll talk about that and more on Thursday's episode of the Tip of the Iceberg podcast.